This film focuses on the connection between the first four modules in the house, getting started and making it stick, knowing how we're doing, involving patients in improvement, and improving today's practice. The first three, the enabler modules, are all about setting direction and gathering data about your practice. The fourth module draws conclusions from this work and helps the practice create a plan of how to go forward. The danger is on any major change management programme is that people dive into solving the problems a bit like you might in going into a garden and just getting straight, you know, cutting flowers and pruning hedges and so on. What I was really keen to do here, and I think it's really important, is that we establish the conditions for change, that we understand um, the, the whole organisation before we decide on what it is to fix. Getting started and making it stick is about creating a context for change. It starts to set up the programme structure so everyone feels involved and knows they can contribute. A key part is the strategic direction meeting where the practice asks questions like where are we now and where do we want to go. Partners can then agree their strategic direction and decide on the scale of change the practice would like to take on. It's important to start with the getting started and making it stick module because it's an opportunity for everybody to buy into the whole program and also to establish a vision and a strategic direction for the practice. It gives you an aim basically. It was a good exercise looking at where we all thought uh, we wanted to be in terms of getting a vision for the practice and um, it, it allowed us the opportunity to actually have time to sit down and actually discuss that. And the first thing that we did was to look at strategic leadership and understand why 70% of change management programmes don't work. We then spent quite a lot of time also considering that to effect greater change is going to take greater effort and it's how much effort we wanted to put in to effect that change. As part of that discussion we also considered the risk factor because with greater change comes greater risk. The conclusion that we came up from these discussions was that as we were being asked to do more for little or no extra resource we had to be more productive. I think if one has a common goal then, then the tasks that we want to try and uh, achieve become easier and, and I think if everyone feels that we are all heading in the right direction, then that's when you're going to be able to get maximum output from your team, maximum efficiency, and at the same time create a very happy and, and, and successful working environment. It was absolutely critical to get all of the partners on board at the strategic direction setting meeting. What that gave everyone is a sort of clear view on where we were going and actually the surprising thing was how close all of the partners were in their outlook and what they wanted to achieve. For us the module was extremely useful. It confirmed to us that the vision that we had had in our heads was actually the correct one for us and that actually everybody was on board with it. I think if a practice did the exercise and found that their opinions uh, were very disparate, it would be a really good starting place to bring that vision together and hopefully improve the strength of the partnership, the partners and the practice. One of the exercises proved really helpful and that was the um, growth and profit exercise where, where each of the partners plotted on it where they felt in terms of where the practice needed to go in the future, how much of that was growth, how much was profit. And the really interesting thing that came out of it was actually about understanding the partners' motivations. And actually it was work-life balance that was the issue to them. That's where they really wanted to see the improvement rather than necessarily on bottom line growth. And maybe I wouldn't have picked that up from the partners without that exercise. The aim afterwards would be that we would take this then to the reception team, to the administrating team, to the nursing team and actually say look this is where we are uh, 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 from the partners and business managers point of view and practice managers point of view but where do you want to be as well so that we all actually as a practice um, then head in that direction. Knowing how we're doing asks the question where are we now? This module provides simple diagnostic tools to help the practice team move beyond assumptions and opinion to come up with some measurable facts. From a personal point of view it wasn't very difficult to collect the data but that's actually because it was my staff that were involved in collecting that data and that's the beauty of the programme. You're not alone in this improvement activity, it's about engaging and involving other people in that work. There's seven key questions that I think every practice needs to ask themselves and this module just helps you to gather the evidence on every single one of those. It's nothing that will come as a surprise to practices, it tells you how to gather information, what your patients are saying about you, 
how your staff feel, about your referral rates, prescribing, all sorts of um, issues around good practice. Productive drone practice is not only good for patient care and for, for practice teams, it also benefits the environment and the sustainability agenda. For example, improving efficiency, practice can save on paper, on heating costs, or using telephone consultations in preference to face-to-face -face consultation can save on, on transport costs for patients. The data was collected in two separate areas. One was split into the doctors and nurses, they had a separate sheet, and the other one was the receptionists were collecting data from the patients phoning up for appointments and also the face-to-face -face contact. <laughs> The surprise is that if you go looking for information, it is there, although every day we don't generally see it. For example, part of my tasks was to look at the practice profile, and it surprised me how easy that was to find in the data that's already collected within the practice. By using the Knowing How You're Doing analysis tool, it meant that all the data that we collected, we just entered it onto the computer, the computer did all the work for us, it actually did all the graphs, I just printed them out, put them in laminated, and there's my display. Involving patients in improvement helps the practice to look at how patients can contribute to their improvement efforts, so they can share the role of improving care and redesigning services. When patients used to come see me as a GP, I'd ask how things had gone at the hospital, and they'd often say, well, it was great, but, and, and I could never do anything about the but. It wasn't my job to do anything about the but. It could have been better. But it's really important to listen to those buts because the, the way patients see services and the way they feel about them is really important to making services as effective as possible and to improving them. And that's what patient engagement is really all about. It's about listening to patients, putting their views and insights right at the centre of delivering and planning health services. In the current NHS there's a lot of talk about involving patients and it's very easy to do that as a tick box exercise. This programme has given us some tools like the patient's journey to work alongside patients as true partners in their care, to understand what they're thinking and if we do things together we've realised that we provide better patient care. Involving patients in improvement has been a really helpful module to get involved with. It was about being able to pick almost from a menu of different techniques and ideas of things that have worked elsewhere and to add that to some of the things we wanted to do internally to really get people involved. We've got a very active patient participation group. We've moved the practice forward a very long way of, of actually centering ourselves around our patients. When you involve patients, they feel more empowered and they feel that it's their practice rather than you're just turning up to a doctor's. I think the real strength in the patient participation group is the different backgrounds and particular issues that the patients have in terms of their own health and backgrounds, but also the, the personalities and the, the skills and the strength and the knowledge that they bring as individuals um, to be able to help us develop our service without a doubt. Involving patients with our work has helped in rearranging appointment schedules and systems, listening to what patients would like to see, perhaps in the waiting area of brighter colours um, and more feel of airiness. Once a month we come to a forum meeting. They came to the meetings and said, you know, like, these are the colour schemes that we like, you know. This is what we want to do. Do you agree with it? Do you think it's right? Do you think it's going to benefit? Everything with regards now to the practice, the brochure, the website, even the uniform, everything's like a turquoise colour. It's uplifting. Everybody's got a smile on their face and people don't mind sitting waiting in the waiting room. As well as the more traditional methods of paper-based surveys and face-to-face -face patient participation groups, many practices are now starting to consider bringing into the mix more recent technology, such as online and mobile. The PPG have an online forum where patients are invited to come and look and also get involved. That's really good because it, people can see what we're talking about, what's happening at the practice because there's a lot more news goes on there than onto the website and it keeps people a lot more up to date. Working with technology doesn't always mean financial investment and there are several systems already set up which practices can become involved in. If people want to get involved in this new way of doing things then 
The first port of call is something like NHS Choices, which will be familiar to many uh, GPs and practices because you're already up there and people are already passing comments about you. Have a look at sites like I Want Great Care and Patient Opinion, see what's happening on there and you'll see a whole range of new conversations that are happening transparently and in public which all help to focus patient insights and turn them into better services. This module is the decision point for programme planning and defining the range and scale of change. Through three separate workshops, it brings together the strategic and practice goals agreed in getting started and making it stick, with the data collected in knowing how we are doing, and the involvement culture temperature check completed for involving patients in improvement. The first workshop was about reviewing the data collected in knowing how you're doing. Um, and for us it was critically important that every member of the practice was involved in that because that sends such a powerful message about how we value everyone's contributions and different perspectives. It allowed us to have some protective time during surgery to actually have the whole practice team involved in looking at the data we, that had been collated from patient experience to waiting times to referral rates. The Improving Today's Practice workshop was a very dramatic and visual uh, presentation of data. You could see it all stretched out before you. We were divided into groups which allowed us to bond again with uh, all members of the team and we were asked specific questions about how the data made us feel, uh, where we thought improvements could be made uh, and we then had a dot exercise where we were able to actually highlight individually what we thought was important for the practice. The dot exercise is about each, each member of staff going around with a series of dots to identify the areas of greatest pain, the biggest opportunities, perhaps areas that need to be celebrated. It was a levelling exercise in that general practice tends to be a little bit hierarchical and each element of a practice is actually vital to the working of that practice. And so to have everybody able to make an equal input is important in changing the practice throughout its functions. The first thing it showed was that different things mattered to different groups. I think the other thing is just how much common ground there was between those groups. Another really powerful thing for me was the involvement of the, some of the members of the patient participation group. I thought it was really great to see them there and it felt that we were really working more outwardly. It was great to be able to look at the charts and the ways the data were presented. It was a great opportunity for all of us to, to come together, talk about the implications these findings may have and it really created a positive feeling and some desire to move forward from this. Workshop 2 is a decision making module and it's very much about deciding on how we're going to approach the rest of the programme, how we're going to sequence the activities, what track we're going to take through it, which staff we're going to get involved on various modules. We systematically just looked at all of these issues and looked to see if the processes within the house would improve these issues or whether it was something that we'd have to look to actually redesign the services that we were offering. The Productive General Practice programme is, is very flexible and can be adapted to any type of practice and uh, to any needs that the practice may have. The hard bit, I think, is, is to look at where you want to go, but it certainly does give you the raw materials and information by which you can start to make decisions about how to restructure the appointments during the week or look at how you might want to reconfigure your st staff. Workshop 3 is about planning the implementation of the remaining modules, and I'm really keen as a practice that we involve every member of staff here, but it's not just me that's keen in that. A lot of the staff too are already chomping at the bit asking when can they get involved in the programme because they're seeing good work going on elsewhere. It was to get everyone together to see how are we going to implement this, how is this going to work. We systematically just looked at the issues that we've identified and we looked at the staff, the hours, the time that it would take, the priority that we'd need to give it and from that we actually came up with an action plan about how we are actually going to implement the house. This might sound that you're giving up a lot of time
time to the Productive General Practice. For this module, these three meetings, it was a total of time to the practice of four hours, which if you build it into your usual practice meetings, it's just what we did, you know, it's manageable. We've seen quite a few benefits already, and I think the, the biggest of those is probably a greater shared understanding of, of where the practice is and what, where its problems are and what the priorities for resolving that are. It's very much at this stage about getting people behind the programme. It's about changing behaviours and, and giving people permission to make change, not feeling that um, they've got to be authorised to do something. So it's slow cultural change and behavioural change that we're bringing in that doesn't necessarily yet turn into this is so many pounds saved, this is how much better the patient experience is, but it feels different, it feels really different to where we were six months ago. The productive general practice has produced benefits which we just didn't anticipate. In many ways it's drawn our team together, dealing with common problems that prior to this we would never have discussed. And the global overview of issues that it has helped drive has changed the way we think permanently.